The Mirage volcano has dazzled millions of people since it erupted a quarter <laughs> century yeah, ago. The display is spectacular, but very few people have seen it from the inside. Well, a few days ago, the volcano fired up once again after being down for six weeks for maintenance. The new version has three times as many special effects as the original, and keeping track of all the moving parts, well, it's a daunting task. We wondered, is there one guy who runs the operation, one lord of the <laughs> lava? We sent George Knapp to see if he could find the volcano man. Wide-eyed visitors stare in awe at the nightly eruptions of fire and steam, at the rocky crags glowing with hints of red-hot magma. But high above all this, a lone figure stands in the shadows, his face flickering with reflections from the Mirage volcano, his volcano. Is this Vulcan himself, or perhaps Pele, preparing to toss in a sacrificial virgin or two? We're getting way ahead of ourselves. The story begins back in the late 80s when the Strip's first mega resort was under construction. Something unique was forming out front, a faux Kilauea rising from the Caliche, a Vegas Krakatoa. The volcano was a hit from the very first eruption. It's our out front feature. It's our lead uh, feature on the property and everything, and it's been here since the property opened back in 1989. Dennis Mefford isn't the volcano man. He's the volcano man's boss. The world's only volcano control room is his office. To get there, the volcano man slides into the bowels of the earth. This, this is it. Into darkness. He and his five-man team are the only mortals with this kind of power. They're the only ones that's got a license to operate a volcano. Now what does it say on your license? Uh, basic volcano effects operator. You have a volcano license. Yes. <laughs> For more than 15 years, Kurt Aaron has been the guy in charge of the world's first man-made volcano, which we'd imagine is a great conversation starter at parties. All right, we're here. When somebody asks what we do, I, we say we work at the volcano, they say, what is there to do? Just push a button. And there is a button to push, but there's a lot more maintenance to do on the volcano. Is there a button to push? There is, right here. Actually, there are a lot of buttons to push, sensors to check, monitors to watch. The volcano is an engineering marvel, but for the illusion to work, a lot of elements have to perform in seamless unison. For instance, click a button and more than a hundred alien submarines rise from the water of the Mirage Lagoon. Those are fire shooters. Here's one up close. But This is a typical fire shooter. Um, all electronics are underwater. There's a can that goes over it, and we pressurize it with air to keep it dry. To service the gear, Kurt and his team often work in wetsuits and are certified divers. The water is real cold. This is the view from inside the volcano, a side few people ever see. The structure is just under 40 feet high. Colored lights shoot reddish rays out these little slits. From the outside, it looks like cracks in the rock, ready to spew lava. Millions of gallons of water flow through the volcano and lagoon via a complex system of pumps and filters. Everywhere you look, there are tanks and lines for various gases that are essential to the creation of ooze and ahs. Atop the volcano is a massive maze of pipes and tanks and whiz-bang gizmos. The team climbs, crawls, and cleans every inch of the volcano, tightening this, welding that, and giving special attention to this baby. It's the last effect of the show. Like finale. Big, big, big fireball. Yeah, it shoots a giant fireball. The soundtrack, a pounding Polynesian rhythm, was custom created by two world-class drummers, including Mickey Hart of the Grateful Dead. If the wind is stronger than 10 miles per hour, the show shuts down. If a tourist tries to climb the volcano, a ring of infrared sensors stops the show. Watch the slippery feet. Since the, the new version of the volcano has been operational, no TV crew has been allowed on top to record the full performance. We figured it'd be worth the climb. I wore my climbing clothes. First time you see it up here, it's intense. It's, it's, you're, you'll be amazed. You got lights, water, fire, fog. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. All right, get ready. <laughs> Wait for it. You didn't know you were going to get a tan, did you? 
tan. A melted face is more like it. We felt like hot dogs being cooked on a campfire. The view from the sidewalk is always entertaining, but from Volcano oh, yeah. Man's perch, it's overwhelming. George Knapp, 8 News Now. How about that? Yeah. Well, the Mirage spent $25 million during its most recent renovation of the volcano. Even though it added several features and effects, the volcano now uses less gas, less electricity than when it began. Shows run every 30 minutes from dusk until about 11 p.m., depending on the season. George adds that no human sacrifices were made <laughs> during the production of his news story.